Hello, Fun Hustler here, and today I'm going to discuss with you my best, that's right, my best reselling hustles of the past 16 to 18 years. What's going on guys and gals, Chris the Bonafide Hustler coming to you live from the inside of my office and today it's a rainy day outside here in Austin, Texas. It's a perfect day to show you guys uh, or to tell you guys about my best hustles. So I think some people behind the scenes have always asked me, you know, through the years, what's like your best stuff? Like let us know about your best flips. I think that would be a really good video. And today I finally have the time to film that kind of video. Now. As we move forward, two things. First of all, if you are interested in making money reselling used items, go get the free guide right here. It is the first link down below. It'll teach you 50 used items that commonly resell for really good money. I built that thing about a year ago. It's the first link down below. It's 100% free, and it puts you on my awesome email list where there's some really cool cheddar reports every month. Now, um, what I want to tell you guys is for me to hunt for every picture of the actual things here, it would take me forever to go through not only my phone, but to go through other hard drives where the pictures might be. So I'm going to go to Google Images and I'm just going to flash the pictures of what uh, these things are. And if I just so happen in my phone to find the real pictures of what you know, I use to make the ads, then I'll put them up as well. But it's going to be tough to find. Now, I know with the very first find, it's actually in my bags to bucks guide. So we'll start off with that. And that was a $1.50 uh, Ralph Lauren bag. Now, there was, this wasn't a double uh, RL kind of bag or anything like that. It was a Ralph Lauren proprietor, uh, kind of like a leather uh, almost like a, not a weekender bag, but like a messenger type bag. Uh, this was found on a Friday um, here in Austin, Texas. And the same time that I found that, I also spent another four bucks or maybe three bucks on a bag that was made by King Ranch and sold for good money, I think a hundred something dollars. But this dollar fifty bag right here that is showing in the picture actually sold for six hundred and forty nine dollars. If not six hundred seventy nine dollars, six hundred forty nine dollars. Either way, this picture is pulled right out of my guide bags to bucks. So uh, definitely check out any of those kind of offerings. Will be down below and maybe the second link or something like that. If you're interested and you're like, I want to get into this kind of game and I'd like to you know be able to do things like that. Uh, I have many guides out there that will help you uh, you know realize profits from bags, sporting goods, bikes, um, shoes, for example. So we're gonna. Be going through some things here I have it on my little list uh, but yeah that was one of my <laughs> best sells uh, it was listed I think at 749 or 779 at the time and on a Saturday morning before I went garage selling before I was filming a vlog uh, I got hit with an offer for 649.99 for a dollar fifty bag took the offer shipped it off got positive feedback and the guy basically was like I've been looking for this bag for a very long time to accompany the duffel bag that I guess is was produced around the same time and he was looking hard for the proprietor bag that was more of like a sling style. So that was a dollar fifty bag that sold on eBay for six hundred forty nine ninety nine. That sold in two thousand and eighteen around June, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so let's go to the next awesome item that I, and this is gonna kind of ramp up a little bit more and more and more. Now, the next item that I found, I have found these, I've made videos about these kind of things. When I was, when Eric, the college picker was in town, we even captured it when he was in town for a green room meetup. The fact that I found one of these at a pawn shop. So I'm, I, I have found four of these, all right, in the past, I found three in the past year, maybe year and a half, okay? And then the one that I owned for the longest time, I owned it for like five years, okay? So the very first time that I actually got into one of these, I spent 900 out the door at a garage sale, a bicycle sports shop garage sale, the biggest bike store in town, had a garage sale once a year. And I just noticed this thing in the back, it's an elliptical, all right? And it's an elliptical bicycle, all right? And so the one that I owned had carbon fiber trays and everything like that, I spent 900 bucks on it. And um, I kept that um, all the way through, not too long ago, like maybe six months ago, I sold it. Uh, but I sold that one for 1400 if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I used it for five years, so keep that in mind as well. It was a really fun thing, but it took up a lot of space in the garage. Um, and at some point in the five years, I did put uh, about, oh man, 80 bucks into it to get new rollers put in because as you wear this thing down, I mean the roller, little roller bearing things like eventually give out. We use this thing so much, all right? So that was the first uh, kind of intro I had to elliptigos 
And uh, basically, the next one that I found was with Eric um, at a pawn shop. We found one for like 250 out the door that needed serious work. So I didn't even take that one home. On the video, I am shown taking it, I think it was with a Prius maybe, I don't know. Maybe I had a forerunner on me that day. But either way, I take it to a bicycle, I take it to a bicycle sports shop, it was a big bike store that can work on elliptigos. And uh, I take this uh, $250 pawn shop find and $200 later, you know, I spend on it, I'm 450 into it. I sold that one for $1,100 shortly after that. Um, so I didn't really need to test it out anymore or anything like that because I already had one, right? And uh, so that kind of like piqued my interest into elliptigos. And then just last year, I was on Facebook Marketplace on a random evening. Uh, this was way early last year. Um, I was on Facebook Marketplace and this is kind of something that I do when I'm bored. Periodically through the day, I'll get on Facebook Marketplace and I'll just look at ads. Uh, and sometimes you can find the greatest deals on misclassified type things. And so uh, I was on Facebook Marketplace just killing time and I saw um, a post that said two elliptical bikes and a bike trainer. It said two elliptical bikes and a bike trainer. It did not say elliptigo or anything like that, but the picture was clearly an elliptigo, okay? And then when I went to the next picture, because you know, Facebook Marketplace, you can kind of swipe. The next picture was a different color one. So one was a green one, one was a red one, all right? And then uh, it said also comes with a green bike trainer. And I was like, I already, I already know what a green bike trainer is. That's only one model out there. It's one brand that makes green bike trainers. So uh, I got the lady down to 550 agreed upon price because this place was an hour away that I had to travel to get these things. So uh, I was like, I'll give you 550 right now for both those things and that trainer. So kind of fast forward how it all planned. I come back and I have two mint condition, barely used elliptigos, and I also have a bike trainer. The bike trainer ends up selling for 150 bucks locally, and then both elliptigos sell um, probably a month apart from each other. Uh, they sell for 1200 a piece, all right? So you can kind of do the math. Uh, I spent 550 on the whole thing. I get 150 back from the bike rack. I'm really kind of 200 bucks into each elliptigo at that point. And then I sell each for 200. I, I sell each for uh, 1200. I think I did sink maybe 40 bucks into one to readjust the brake cable or something like that. So basically I made like 980 on each one. Yeah, that really happened. So um, very, very interesting kind of thing with the elliptigos. So you guys definitely need to learn that. I think I also put that in my outdoor items to bucks guide and even my bikes to bucks guide. So, you know, look around for these kind of things because they're very, very popular in places like California, Florida, Austin, um, extremely hilly places, not so much, but places that have long stretches of gradual, you know, hills or like beachfront um, kind of, uh, or anything with beachfront basically, uh, where, where cruiser bikes would be kind of like a popular thing. You will find people on elliptigos, but they're kind of out of the price range of most people. And uh, elliptigos usually start around 1800 and they max out around like three grand. So to get one that's barely used for 1400 is kind of a good deal, you know? Um, and the one that I sold for 1400, that was my own, that one when it came out was every bit of almost three grand. So, you know, someone will totally buy a used one for half price when it deals with elliptigos. So study elliptigos and if you're in your spare time you see something misclassified like elliptical bike, you know, there might be a really big opportunity for you guys out there uh, to make some money. All right, let me pause the video for one second and just ask you guys quickly, if you like videos like this, and I know we're in like a weird kind of state where I can't go thrifting and I cannot, you know, make the normal kind of videos that I do, which are like thrifting vlogs and garage sale vlogs, and I really do miss it, don't get me wrong, but if you could do me a huge favor and just hit the like button of this video, um, that'll just make me do more videos like this. So, and everyone can learn from these kind of videos, all right? Nobody uh, is immune, this, this video will absolutely have value for you, and uh, if you just listen to it for what it is, it's not me bragging about a bunch of money that I made, it is really there to teach you that there's big money in a lot of other things and maybe not so much some of the more stereotypical things that people are kind of chasing after. But you're gonna see quite a different uh, amount of items here. So the first one was a bag, the second one were kind of elliptical bicycles. The third one was, this one happened maybe uh, 10, maybe 12 years ago, okay? So I was at a pawn shop and I was very, very well versed on pawn shops by that time. And uh, I walked into one and uh, Whitney, my wife at the time, uh, she, I walked in and I walked out. I was like, oh, there's no bike I want to buy here. But she was like, she comes around the corner from like a very far corner of the pawn shop. She comes to the very, you know, uh, place where we're about to exit the pawn shop. And she goes, is Yeti a good brand of bike? I'm like, yeah, it's a really good brand of bike. I was like, why? She goes, there's a Yeti around the corner, like way tucked in the corner that nobody can see. 
So I look around the corner, I was like, oh crap, like there's a Yeti, you know? So in the pawn shop, there was a Yeti 575X, which 12 years ago, 26 inch bikes were very much the rage. Like everyone liked them. And a 575X, if I'm not mistaken, had like a carbon fiber rear triangle and an aluminum main triangle or something, or maybe in a carbon fiber main triangle and aluminum rear triangle. Um, and it was just a very high-end bike, you know, and this one was a, the paint job was like the racing paint job. So basically this bike was 1500 bucks to about $2,000 like max resale. And I knew it when I saw it, I was like, wow, this is a really good bike. Like it's got the racing paint on it too, which was like a more of a special edition at the time. And the pawn shop let me go out the door with that bike for 800 bucks and it was working perfect too. So I put that one on mtbr.com. Um, the classified section of it and found a buyer and within a month it was gone. It was cool. It was an extra large though. I mean, I think if it was a large, I probably would have kept it, used it and sold it for like a thousand bucks, but it was an extra large. It was out of my, uh, I really tried hard to make, make it work for me, but it just didn't. It was a really cool bike though. Um, but yeah, that one sold for 1800 bucks. I cannot remember to this date if I included shipping or not on that bike. I'm not hundred percent sure, but if I didn't include shipping, then that was about a thousand dollar profit, you know, but if I did include shipping, um, it's more than likely an $800 profit because all I do when I ship high-end bikes out, which is very rarely, is I just take them to a bike store and I assume that it's gonna be about 175 to 200 bucks. For that bike store to pack it into a box perfectly with all the padding and everything, seal the box, FedEx it out, it's about 200 bucks, you know? And yeah, I could do it, but I'm not in the business to do that. I'm in the business to locate it, research it, you know, market it. That's what I'm in business for. I'm not a packing specialist. So, um, especially with big things like that. So that was a Yeti 575X. And then uh, recently in the past, maybe six months, I made a video about this because this item sold coincidentally on the same day that this other item sold. So the next two items sold on the same day. Uh, but this was a Trek OCLV USPS carbon bike. Uh, was the very first thing in the video. The video was called like how I made $3,000 in one day, right? Um, so this bike was $75 at a garage sale. I speculated that it might have had a crack on it. And so that's how I got it for so cheap. I think the lady was asking 150 and I was like looking around the frame and I was like, I think it might be cracked right here. It's possible, but I cannot tell. In a parts sense, it was still way worth more than 75 bucks. But if that frame was cracked, that's the risk I was taking. I was like, this is either a $100 or $200 in the pure profit zone, right? If the thing's cracked, but if it's not cracked, this thing's well, worth well over 600 bucks. So it turned out not to be cracked. I took it to a bike store and they looked at it and they go, that's not a crack. That's just where the carbon uh, fiber frame meets the joints. It makes what looks to be like a crack, but it's not a crack. So I was like, okay, cool. So uh, I listed it for 900 bucks and found a buyer that uh, sent a friend down here from a place that's like two hours away. I met him in a parking lot, sold the bike. That was pretty cool. So that was around an $825 profit. I think the same day I sold like a subwoofer speaker on that video maybe. And then the cool thing that did sell, this was one of my favorite things and um, maybe I didn't do a really good job of like airing it on my channel, like how important this thing was. But for 80 bucks on next door, one day I was just chilling. It was, it wasn't one day that I was chilling. I what did I do? I think I had come home from garage sales or either I was an e-money truck. I think this is what it was. I was an e-money truck around 11 o'clock, 1130. We're tired. You know, we're coming back from garage sales and taco deli and, um, $80. This thing pops up on, uh, next door. It's an app. All right. And it says GameCube kiosk with games. All right. So I'm like, Oh my God, like you have to be kidding me. And the, and the, the picture was so, blatantly like oh my god like that is worth a good amount of money to a collector so uh you know 20 minutes later e-money and i are at this house that's a pretty big house and uh in the corner of the living room is this gamecube kiosk that is working okay that is working both controllers work it lights up it's perfect i'm like e-money we have to get this thing so anyway fast forward um i think it came with eight to about 11 games we sold the games made the 80 bucks back in like two seconds um, but the kiosk itself, I had listed it for three grand. Um, I got an offer for someone for a G like shortly thereafter, a bunch of collectors contacted me like, Hey, you know, it was a local pickup only kind of thing. Um, and then it was also listed locally. So it was like a local pickup, but it was listed locally too. So someone locally found it. 
Um, and it was around three grand asking price and someone offered uh, me two grand for it. And then we sold it. But that person had come to the house like three different times. They were like looking at it, playing with it, evaluating it, checking it for cracks. Like how are they gonna transport it out? They had to ultimately get a U-Haul. Um, but yeah, that was really cool. GameCube kiosk, and I'm pretty sure I can look at those pictures. So I'm gonna flash those, um, or I am flashing them by now. Um, but that was a really cool hustle. And that's probably something I will never find ever, 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 ever again. Um, and perhaps I let it go for too cheap, but I also had it listed for around two to three months. Okay, so I think I found the right kind of buyer. Uh, if I was open to shipping it freight, then maybe I could have had three or four grand, maybe. But there's no way that thing would have made it intact, not busted up, and the ballast, you know, the light ballast would have survived the whole entire thing. There's no way. So like this thing was pretty delicate. I'm surprised it had stood the test of time to the point that we had found it. Uh, but that was a really, really interesting hustle, like in and of itself. It just goes to show you that when the deals do come, you better be willing to drop everything to go get them. Just like when I bought those two elliptigos from the place that was about an hour away, I was looking on an evening. I was comfortable here in Austin, Texas. It was like 7.30 in the evening and I was just scouting Facebook Marketplace. Um, and I knew it was time to drop everything, right? Drop everything and go out there and get those things. And that's what I did. All right, so let's go to the very last like big hustle. And uh, this is interesting. I did use it for three years, okay? Um, but when it comes down from cost to cost, all right, from what I paid for it to what I sold it for, this is just kind of like probably the biggest one, all right? So I don't know what the sales tax for boats are here in Austin, Texas. My speculation is that it's somewhere between four and 6%. So I bought a boat or we bought a boat uh, three years ago, all right? Three years ago, $28,500 with very low hours, um, about 120 maybe, or maybe it was 200 hours. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but we sold it with 470 hours, okay? So think about it kind of like, well, he bought a car that had 12,000 miles, and then he sold it for, you know, he sold it when it had 47,000 miles. Kind of think about it like that. That's kind of how we boat hours kind of work, all right? So a boat has hours, and as the boat is actually cranked on, not electrically turned on, but cranked on, the hour meter kind of starts going. So, um, as you own a boat, it's in your best interest to like kind of keep that thing from like going all the way up. But um, yeah, twenty eight thousand five hundred dollars bought it, used it for three years. Of course, there's all these other costs with owning a boat. We all know that. But when it comes down to price bought versus price sold, this is probably the biggest one. Um, that one sold for thirty four thousand dollars. So we bought it in a very good time. Um, when the demand was actually, we bought it at a time when before summer came and demand was really high already. Um, and it was a 2008 as well. So like everyone was trying to get the latest and greatest. Um, and before you know it, you could be blowing 130 grand on a boat pretty quickly, splitting the loan up with like two or three of your friends, or you can just hunt around for a $28,000 boat, have the same experience pretty much. It won't be as much tech or anything like that on the boat, but uh, when it comes down to it, it's still floating in the water. It's still pulling a rider. It's still creating a really cool wake. Uh, so yeah, twenty-eight thousand five hundred dollars and sold it for thirty-four thousand dollars. And the way I sold that one is I put it kind of an absurdly high price on the internet when I was getting kind of ready to sell it. I didn't really want to sell it, but I was like, let me put some feelers out there. So I put this kind of absurd price where I was like, if th if it goes for this, I'll let it go. And sure enough, two buyers contacted me, and then one kind of did the ghosting thing that is very common, you know. Uh, but the other one showed up at the lake and did a test run with me and spent, you know, a couple hours out there testing the wake out, listening to the stereo and everything like that, and then gave me a full cash offer at the end of the day. So that was the biggest uh, hustle right there. I hope you enjoy this video. Let me know what your biggest, okay, your biggest, your number one biggest resale hustle has been. Put it down below. I would love to read it, all right? And like I said earlier, hit the like button if you've got this far. And I'll see you on the next Bonafide Hustle video. Take it easy. Goodbye.